you'd like to see more of our videos, hit the subscribe button to stay on top of the market news. Good morning, traders. Welcome to today's market review. This is Fred Rezek at CM Trading. Today's August 3rd, 2020. And today is Monday morning. So looking at the highlights of the day, once again, it happens. Apple stock explodes to the upside last week after posting better than expected sales report on its iPhone. But first, let's take a look at the economic events of the day. So looking at the economic events today, we have one schedule today for three o'clock South African time coming out of the United States. It's an ISM manufacturing PMI number coming out. Now, as the week moves on, we've got some major numbers coming up, including a rate decision from the United Kingdom. And also on Friday is NFP. Now, looking at the markets, we're going to first start out with the currencies, the euro, the British pound and the Aussie dollar all retrace versus the US dollar. And that South African rand that didn't break lower last week actually rallied a little bit to its upper range. We're going to take a look at that. That's a very important factor. And we did call that out. Now, looking at the indices, the Dow Jones tapers off while the Nasdaq remains very strong and on the upside. Now, looking at the commodities, gold pretty much steady right below its resistance ish level while oil tapers off on the bottom range. Lastly, looking at the stock, it's Apple Facebook trading to all time record highs as the market is kind of digesting all this information. And remember, we're still in a pandemic, okay? So the fact that these stocks are making new all-time highs, okay? So it shows that the economy is still doing something right. So let's take a look at the markets and see what we can expect from today's trading. So we're taking a look at here at the euro dollar, okay? At a four hour chart, you can see pretty much we did taper off from our high of 119. Now this was a fantastic move from last week to this week, okay? If we look at, you know, just the couple of intervals here, you know, in the last couple of weeks, it's just been unbelievable. Okay, the fact that we're retracing to the support level of 1760-ish level is normal, okay? That is a bona fide support level. If we do break it, then we may still continue to come back to the 115-ish area, okay? Now this between here, between the low of 112 and the high of 119, somewhere in the middle, that 50% retracement is still something to consider as this does make a correction further this week. Now looking at the GBP USD, that's too much of a time frame. We're looking at a weekly here. So we are at some turbulence here, okay? At 130, and to round up numbers, so that is some sort of resistance and the same story here, okay? So if it does break this moving average, it does have that, you know, trend line to be at that 130-ish level, 131-ish level, 130-ish um, level, excuse me, uh, as a support line. So this is showing a little bit more strength in the euro, okay? But this is always catching up the GBP, okay? So something to consider. Now I'm going to jump into the RAND. I'm going to skip the Aussie dollar. Looking at the RAND, and we mentioned this last week, it didn't break this 1642-ish level, which we were looking at quite sharply as the market was getting stronger and the dollar was getting weaker across the board, it didn't do that to the RAND. The RAND should have traded further down to about 15 and even 14, and it didn't, okay? Which showed massive weakness in the South African RAND, didn't break further down. So that was your key spot to actually jump in it, okay? Now, we did break our downwards trend line at this 1657 and now we're at 17 so this was a layup of a trade last week okay because this is what i call you know the triple ace the triple star okay you had all the factors as relative strength okay or relative weakness in this case number one number two was trading at support and number three okay it was breaking that wedge formation which is right here okay to give you that confirmation that I'm breaking out, okay, and I'm really weak versus the dollar, okay, and that's exactly what happened here, an explosive move, a really easy layup, and could have made, you know, a very decent money in those type of trade. Now, jumping into gold, okay, we're trading just below that 2000 level, we're struggling with that 1984-ish level, as you can see, um, we're trading right now in 1975. Now, I don't want to say that this is going back down to somewhere about 1797, but I do expect a 50% retracement here. Okay, might not happen today, but somewhere about the 1888-ish level would be that spot. Okay, but we do first have to break this 1948-ish level for us to get to that 1888-ish level. Uh, so keep that in mind 
as a back burner. Okay, nothing to really jump into oil right now. So I'm going to jump into the Dow Jones. Now the Dow Jones has been relatively weak. Okay, if we look at it compared to uh, some of the other indices, especially the Nasdaq. So we did retrace quite sharply from the beginning of last week. Um, so the real place to really break this on the upside is this downwards trend line, the second fan that we have set up here. Um, so if it does do that, then I do believe we'll trade between the upper limit, maybe 26, 528 ish level. Um, and the lower limit, obviously, right now is 26, 187. OK, so keep that in mind. I mean, we're in a in a range right now. OK, and there's some heavy volume every time there's buying. So something to consider. And I'm looking at the Nasdaq. We're back to our highs, 10,937. And this is really reflective of the fact that some of the big fang stocks are making all time highs. OK, and we're going to jump into that. So looking at Apple, it's trading at 422. Look at that gap up 382 above its all time highs of 400. OK, and it was a gap and go. This is called a runaway gap. OK, with these type of runaway gaps, this could even hit five hundred dollars a share. OK, now every time this company gets bigger and bigger and bigger, everybody says, you know, can it get any bigger? And sure enough, look at what's been happening. I mean, if we look at a monthly, can you do what guys want me to tease you a little bit? Look at a monthly. This thing 20 years ago was trading in a negative territory. OK, and today it's trading at five hundred dollars. If you bought, you know, one dollar worth of it today, you'd have five hundred dollars. OK, that's unbelievable. OK, really unbelievable returns for Apple. Now, looking at Facebook also, that was the other one that really struggled every time it hit this high of 247. It couldn't break higher. Remember, this has been trading within this range really weak. Every time the market took off, it didn't take off. It actually sold off, as you can see, several times. And finally, finally, after it came out with some really decent earning reports from 233 up to 250, breaking that barrier of 250 and above it. Now, it's got to sustain above it. OK, otherwise it's going to fill in the gap. OK, so something to consider and keep on the burner. And looking at Microsoft, it took a little bit of a turn here. OK, settling at two hundred dollars a share, not breaking lower, but it's not breaking out higher either. OK, so there is a rotation in the markets happening right now. And lastly, looking at Amazon trading at thirty one fifty. Let's look at a four hour chart. Just give us perspective here. We are at the upper range. We're not breaking out higher. OK, so something to consider going into today's trading. Now, lastly, going into Bitcoin, which is I really like this. OK, it is flirting with that resistance level at eleven thousand. 138. So as soon as it does break out of it, we could definitely go into the 13, 14, 15,000 range. Now, the markets are happening. Okay. In the summer trading, for the markets to be trading this volatile, unbelievable. Okay. So take advantage of it. This is Fred Razak. I want to wish you guys a great trading day. Thank you.